Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to our Best Cards Ever series. If you haven't seen these before and want to catch up on the different scents we've covered already, you can start right here with Urza Saga. Pretty cool story if you ask me. Anywho, today we're talking about time spirals, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the history lesson. We've got some cool information for you. If you enjoy these Best Cards Ever videos and want more of them, please hit the like button. Helps out a lot. Time Spiral is the 40th Magic the Gathering expansion set and was released October 6, 2006. The idea behind the set was nostalgia. It was about looking back to the past and realizing that time is running out. It's why the hourglass is the set symbol. Some cool Time Spiral facts for you. In addition to the normal set, Time Spiral was also printed with a bonus subset of 121 additional time-shifted cards. These are all cards printed before the original Mirrodin that were given special reprints with the old card border and unique purple Time Spiral set symbol. There was also one in every pack. Due to these time-shifted cards, Wizards had to do something they hadn't ever done. Instead of printing 11 commons, 3 uncommons, and 1 rare in a pack, they changed it to 10 commons, 3 uncommons, 1 rare, and 1 time-shifted card in a pack. This marks the first change in card distribution since Alliances back in 1996. Time Spiral was also the first set to implement the current foil card distribution method. You know how foils always replace commons now? Yeah, that started here. Before that, foils would replace a card with the same rarity, making it impossible to pull a rare and foil rare in the same pack. You can thank Time Spiral for giving you so much value. Lastly, Time Spiral brought with it three new mechanics, Suspend, Split Second, and Flash. Even though Flash had previously existed, it wasn't its own mechanic. Time Spiral brought Flash onto cards and made it into an evergreen keyword. The more you know. Let's take a look at where prices were on release. This is always fun. We actually have the prices from the fall of 2006, so get ready for this. The most expensive card in the entire set on release, Ancestral Vision at $8. Players saw draw three cards and went crazy. While Suspend did prevent the card from being played for multiple turns, it didn't stop players from freaking out. Back then, a card at $8 at release was a big deal, a lot of potential power there. After the Vision at $8, there was a handful of $6 cards, Begarden Hellkite, Lotus Bloom, and Magus of the Scroll, and Sarah Avenger. Back then, there wasn't a Mythic rarity, but you can imagine what the Mythics would have been based on their early prices. The Dragons were always some of the most expensive cards out of the gate. Begarden Hellkite was a giant dragon with a sweet removal ability and flash. Everyone loved it. Big Dragons were all the rage. Lotus Bloom brought the same type of hype that Ancestral Vision did. While it didn't demand the same price tag, the hype was there. Lotus Bloom was Black Lotus Light. The potential playability alone justified its whopping $6 price tag. Magus of the Scroll was Curse Scroll on a Creature. This was during a time when Curse Scroll itself was still upwards of $30. Old players saw this and immediately knew it had potential value. Much like the nostalgia cards we just looked at, it took older players by storm. They all wanted it. Lastly, Sarah Avenger. Cheap Angel, two abilities players like, and a 3-3. Even with the claws attached, no one cared. They remembered Aether Vial. Casting a card wasn't the only way to get it into play. It was that simple. When it came to early pricing for Time Spiral, a lot of it was based on nostalgia for old effects more than anything else. Definitely skewed the prices in the favor of older, recognizable cards. Still, $8 being the highest price for a card. Miss those days, right? The set came into Magic at an interesting time. Players were just starting to come back after the fiasco that was Kamigawa Block. Sales numbers were starting to go back up and interest in the game was snowballing. The standard format before Time Spiral entered the fray was chaotic to say the least. It was comprised of 9th Edition, Ravnica, Guild Pack, Dissension, and Cold Snap. Due to the massive amount of playable cards, there were a ton of viable strategies. In the events leading up to rotation, a few decks did stand above the rest. One was an aggro deck, the other a control deck. The aggro deck was called Sea Stompy, and most iterations were Teamer. Birds of Paradise, Curd Ape, Trigon Predator, coupled with Umizawa's Jite, Remand, Rumbling Slum, you know, the classics. The control deck was mainly Esper, sitting behind Wrath of God and Mortify, the deck eventually won by ramping Signets into Angel of Despair, Kokosho the Evening Star, or a Darkhar Valkyrie. Standard was an aggressive time. 
While the aggro and control decks were both very good, there were plenty of other top tier strategies. I mean, we are talking about a time when the Tron lands were back in standard, but that's for a little later. It's important to note that most tournament results leading up to Time Spiral's entry into Standard were varied and healthy, a very cool time to play. <laughs> That's funny because Cold Snap was in Standard. Cool, Cold Snap. <laughs> oh man, nailed that. <laughs> After Time Spiral rotates in, the first big test of new Standard is Worlds 2006 in Paris, France. And let me tell you, tournament was hysterical. I mean, fantastically awesome. Time Spiral made a huge impact on the format and definitely filled the shoes that Kamigawa block left after rotation. Boros Deck Wins became a huge player. Acacian Javelineers, believe it or not, played a huge role in this new deck. That alongside Knight of the Holy Nimbus, Soltari Priest, and Burn Favorite Rift Bolt, Boros Aggro was a big hit in the new format. Now Boros wasn't the only guild to see some nice improvements with Time Spiral block. Gruul also became Tier 1. Magus of the Scroll brought some sweet randomness to Standard, while Stonewood Invocation and Call of the Herd brought the aggression. Coupled with classic beaters and Burning Tree Shaman, Curd Ape, and Giant Solifuge, the deck brought its own form of speed and ferocity to Standard. Aggro decks weren't the only beneficiaries of Time Spiral being a thing. Tron was very happy with its new set. Teferi, Mage of Zalfir, and Triskelevis were all-star additions to Tron. The construct specifically was used to dismantle aggro decks for some time. With the added inclusion of Academy Ruins, Mystical Teachings, and careful consideration, there was plenty of time Spiral loved to go around. Of course, these were all strategies that players expected would do well. The deck that won the Pro Tour event? Dragonstorm, yup. The 9-mana Storm Sorcery took down the entire tournament. Using cards like Lotus Bloom, Seething Song, and Rite of Flame, the deck ramped up to Dragonstorm, then searched for the likes of Begarden Hellkite and Hunted Dragon. Now this was a great time to be playing Magic. Something about Time Spiral really brings everyone together, and also makes it easier to cast dragons. Time shifted cards are the best. Before Planar Chaos would rotate in early 2007, there were two decks that became outrageously powerful in Standard. The first was called Blink Riders. The idea was that you'd play Avalanche Riders and then blink them over and over again with momentary blink, destroying all of your opponent's lands over the course of a few turns. Cards like Lightning Angel, Riftwing Cloud Skate, and a place at a Stone Rain were just some of the tools the deck used to make life a living nightmare for its opponents. Truly a nightmare of a deck to play against. The other big player before the next set would influence things was Scrib and Force, a super cute deck that used Scrib Ranger to untap Spectra Force. Yeah, real cute. It also ran cool stuff like Mystic Snake, Plax Manta, and Psionic Blast to keep the board clear and prevent any disruption. Really sweet deck, actually. You know what? Speaking of sweet decks, when Planar Chaos did rotate in, Standard got even more ridiculous. The next event that took place was a Grand Prix in Japan. There were eight different decks in the top eight, including one based on this card. I should really do a best cards in Planar Chaos, shouldn't I? Yeah. Well, that'll be for another video. Let's talk about where the set is now, shall we? Ancestral Vision used to be $8, right? Well, the price was pretty close to that before the unbanned announcement in Modern. Now it's almost 50 bucks. Pretty huge markup in such a little time, but hey, if you got the vision back then, you get a serious return now. What about Bogard and Hellkite? Well, it's been printed in a dual deck, in a From the Vaults, in Magic 2010, and in Commander 2014, it's 50 cents. Oh, how the mighty dragons have fallen from $6 to legit nothing. Good news is that it's still played a ton in Commander decks, so at least there's that. Lotus Bloom, despite its popularity in Modern, is sitting around $8 right now, only a $2 increase from its release price. Now to be fair, it was printed in Modern Masters, and it was a pre-release event foil back in 2006, but still, you'd think it'd be more, right? It's weird. Moving on, we have Magus of the Scroll, and while it wasn't reprinted again ever, it's worth 20 cents. Now this is one of the biggest falls we've ever seen. Magus of the Scroll is legit worthless now, how sad. Curse Scroll itself is down to a couple bucks, so where one goes down, the other does too. Again, sad. Lastly, Sarah Avenger, gone from $6 all the way down to a buck. After being printed in M13, the price stood no chance of going up despite its moderate play in Modern. The Champs promo version is worth around 80 if that makes you happy, but we all know that's about availability more than playability. So with all these cards dropping, where has the value in Time Spiral gone? Ancestral Vision is the most expensive card in the set now, and we already talked about that, so what's second? Academy Ruins. 
Sitting around $25 to $30 right now, the Ruins is a modern mainstay in Lantern Control, any type of Thopter strategy, Tron decks. Even with a reprint in Modern Masters, the card won't stop going up. How much did it cost on release? $2. Yeah, 2 bucks. Wish you could have been there now, right? Dang. Let's look at some other cards that aged really well. Flagstones of Trocare is $25, pretty big jump from being $2 on release. How could they know that Death and Taxes slash Soul Sisters variants would want the card so badly they'd pay that much for it? Also, you know, time spiral availability is terrible. Moving right along, Vesuva is also around $25 now. Players back then knew this card was good though, it was worth $4 on release, so yeah, paying big for that one. You know, overall the set has appreciated decently well. Gauntlet of Power is worth more than 500% its original price, so is Living End, Teferi himself, Gemstone Caverns. Even cards like Sedge Sliver, Swarm Yard, Angel's Grace, and Reiterate are all around 500% increases. That's some serious value. Now the series is called Best Cards Ever for a Reason, so which is it? Which card in Time Spiral is the single best card in the set? It's a tough one. Academy Ruins has been a real powerhouse in a lot of modern strategies. While I wouldn't call it the backbone of any particular deck, it does create serious consistency that can't be argued against. Vesuva is a crazy strong card, but it hasn't seen that much success in competitive magic lately. Living End has its own combo deck in Modern, that has to mean something, right? If we're talking Commander, we gotta include Gauntlet of Power. You see how this could be difficult. Well, after a lot of research and crunching the numbers, gotta say, Ancestral Vision is the best card in Time Spiral. Yes, the price is super high right now, and that may be because of a ton of hype around its unbanning in Modern, but if it was all hype, we'd know that. But it isn't. Playsets of the Vision are showing up in all control decks across all different color combinations in Modern. From PTQs to Magic Online Leagues and Qualifiers, Ancestral Vision's everywhere. It's here to stay, one of the best draw spells printed in the last decade. It is the best card in Time Spiral. Hope you enjoyed our Best Cards Ever Time Spiral Edition video. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if there's a set that you want us to cover, please comment. If you see someone else's comment suggesting a set you like, make sure to thumbs it up so we can see it. We'll do the best we can to make you happy. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGplayer.com. Now, just because Ancestral Vision is the best card in the set doesn't mean there aren't other awesome cards. Commander fan, how about Scion of the Ur Dragon? Yeah, he's from Time Spiral. $7 right now on TCG Player. Pretty cheap if you ask me. Commander not your thing though? No worries. Crow Sand Grip, staple and modern. You can get them right now for a dollar. One dollar. You won't find them cheaper anywhere else. Click the links, enjoy cheap cards, help the channel. Everyone wins.